<coughs> we will sing as English song, Oh Happy Day That Fix My Choice. That's a wonderful song, which is uh, the day, this is the uh, premarital counseling uh, time. So that will be the wonderful time to tell everybody that is the happiest moment. So let us sing with joyful heart, Oh Happy Day That Fix My Choice. My joy on thee, my Savior and my God. When may this glory have me joy and tell me face on the cross. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus was my sincere. He teaches me to watch and pray, and we rejoice every day. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus was my sincere that was not only wonderful actually that was the song i wanted i i wanted to request you people to sing that song so <laughs> surprising yes go on okay thank you so we will sing one more song i have found a friend in jesus is everything to me he is the fairest of 10000 to my soul he is the lily of the valley in him alone i see all i need to cleanse and make me fully whole so he is the best friend and he is the only ultimate friend for all of us
Wonderful. Brother Ranjit, would you please lead us in opening prayer? Our God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you for this wonderful day. Oh God, you have created everything for thy glory's sake. You are the Heavenly Father who cares for your children. Today, our dear Sir Johnson Sir is taking the pre-marital counseling class. Oh God, you know the today's situation. You know the family situation. You know the boys and girls, the youngsters, how they are going. And we thank you and praise you for thy dear servant to whom you have chosen for today's class. Loving Lord and Heavenly Father, I pray unto thee, O oh Lord, Lord, give us grace to accept the heavenly manna from you, O oh Lord. When thy servant Johnson sir speaks, O oh Lord, you speak to every one of us, those who are sitting in this meeting. O oh God, you know better than anybody, Lord, our heart, our mind, our situation, O oh Lord. We pray that, Father, please, Lord, you speak to us. O oh Father, we pray for all the brothers and sisters, everybody. I pray that, Lord, you give grace to accept thy word from heaven. We thank you and praise you for Johnson, sir, once again, 
and the death family one of the family those who have uh, the brother who's supposed to join today but he could not join because the sorrow took place in that family i pray that lord the grievous family everybody i pray that lord the heavenly comfort you give to them so that they may be comforted by thy word because you are our heavenly father who always comfort us who always you speak to us always you give us peace lord we thank you and praise you for thy grace and thy mercy thy blessing hand we are surrendering our our life before thy feet over you speak to us you mold us and you guide us thank you loving lord for hearing our prayers because we offer this prayer and praises in the matchless name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen amen, amen. thank you thank you very much brother ranjit and sister nirishana and uh, dear manna for coming and presenting the song um god bless all three of you um i do miss tracy and i hope that some day she will also be able to join uh maybe from where she is studying so that we can have two screens and all of you singing together i also hope that uh, all three of you will uh, come to many more programs that we organize god bless you thank you thank you sir. thank you so much thank you for the chance you have given thank you so yeah. much for this. thank you as i said brother ranjit studied under me from 1994 up to 97 and i mention that in a special manner because uh in my promotion i said that uh the book i wrote on christian marriage is the most widely sold book in india i wrote that book when brother ranjit was studying at brethren bible institute patanandetta three writers are there and together we wrote that book and what a privilege that i mentioned that book and now brother ranjit who was there at the time of writing that book he uh, and nirishna were are with us today unfortunately that book is in malayalam the title is sandushta kudumbam published by uh, gospel literature service it has undergone almost 20 reprints and still the book is being uh, reprinted and recently they have asked us to revise it that much about the book another book is in the making lord willing eventually that will become available in english and also in hindi coming now to pre marital counseling let me begin with an incident because as brother ranjit was praying he mentioned the peculiar situation in which we find us the situation is so peculiar that it is very very shocking let me mention an incident that i read just two days ago today i am sitting here in kerala mainly because of my ill health i i served in the same place where brother ranjit today serves the lord i read hindi paper which is published from the same city in which brother ranjit lives two days ago i read about a marriage a highly educated girl got wedded before her marriage she pleaded with her future family that my brother wants to come and live with me and i will take care of uh, his education so the family thought okay this girl is coming to our family and uh, if her brother is coming for education and if his family is going to take care no problem so this girl got married her brother came with her they started living 3 months after the marriage the family found out that he was not her brother at all he was her lover 
when her family decided to get her married she did not have the courage to mention to the family that she is in a love affair so she and her lover came upon a clever very clever plan she will get married officially she will go and live with her husband and she will take her lover also with her who will pose as her brother but eventually the family caught them and he was kicked out marriage has become very contaminated in the generation in which we live this is nothing there are a vast number of philosophies which are trying to contaminate marriages further and unfortunately a lot of christians don't have any clue about these philosophies and most of them are unable to refute those philosophies because of that everyone who is going to get married in future or in near future and everyone who is already married but who speaks who opens their mouth and speaks to others need to know about christian marriage and christian family i am giving this introduction because a number of people ask me brother usually pre marital counseling is given to those who are going to get married right if pre marital counseling is given usually only to people who are going to get married then the question was why did you open it up to everyone let me clarify that first because that's also real, related to the purpose of premarital counseling i can see your names on my control panel and i notice that a number of people who have joined today they have teaching ministries in their churches and since you have teaching ministries in your churches i definitely wanted you here so that you here a syllabus on premarital counseling this is only a small portion today i am going to present only a small portion of the entire syllabus that should be given but by hearing that syllabus i want you brothers and also sisters to prepare this subject so that you are able to present it in groups where you are invited for teaching that's why i wanted bible teachers men and women in this group even if they have been married for decades together then others who are married i want you to be here because unfortunately even many years after marriage indian christians continue to harbor a lot of wrong ideas about marriage a lots and lots of wrong ideas about marriage we have to begin somewhere to clear those confusions and those ideas that's another reason why i wanted married people to attend this program i know of a lot of married people who have been married for 10 20 or 30 years and even today they are embarrassed about their own marriage i often see people they stand up in a congregation and say my name is such and such and then instead of pointing to their wife she is my wife her name is such and such they would look here and there uh, uh, and the name is such and such man you are married to that woman for the last 10 20 or 30 years and why don't you have the backbone to speak out and say she is my wife and her name is such and such that's because we indians even after our marriage 
we have a lot of misunderstanding about marriage as though marriage is something shameful or embarrassing. That's why I wanted married people to attend. And a lot of married people here who are neither teachers nor who have any confusion, I wanted them to attend so that you can clarify these things to those people with whom you speak. Speaking is a very important medium of communication within the Christian community. And in the Old Testament, very specific orders were given to speak. Speak the truth which you have received from God. That much about my introduction and also the reason as to why I invited everyone, married or unmarried, young or old, to come and attend. And I want to tell you, the last nine premarital counselings were closed. They were not announced. They were attended by six to eight people, three to four couples only. But finally, we decided to open it up because I realized that a lot, many more people need to know about these things. If the Lord allows and if there is a demand, we will have more premarital counseling programs where we will cover different subjects. We may also think about holding programs in Hindi and also in Malayalam languages and other two languages which I can speak comfortably. It all depends upon demand. Let us begin today's uh, class by reading a Bible verse. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. It's a verse known to all of us. But often we ignore the significance of this verse. Genesis 2.18 says, And the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to live alone. I will make a companion suitable for him. Many of us read, when we read English Bibles, we read from King James Bible where the translation is help meet, which is not a good translation for modern man. For modern man, the right translation is companion. And I decided to read this and present it to you as the first verse from the Bible because marriage is actually companionship. We Indians have a very, very wrong idea about marriage. We Indians think that marriage is sex. And that's why when I announced premarital counseling, a lot of people with embarrassed smiles, they called and asked, hey, uncle, can we also attend? Can we also attend? I told them, man, I'm not going to um, teach you what you think. I'm going to teach you what marriage is is. But the question is, when we talk about marriage, why we Indians think only about sex? I will come to that because there is a definite historical reason for that. And that reason has to be understood. And that reason has to be destroyed because though sex is a part of marriage, Marriage is not sex. That's only a very minor part of marriage. The major part of marriage is companionship. The very first verse, when we read the word of God, often uh, the first statement about a subject often gives a key. Not always, but often gives a key. This is the first verse that we read about marriage. Actually, Genesis chapter 1 has a few verses. We will be reading them. But as to why God made woman is explained for the first time in Genesis 2.18. And 
it's very clearly it's very clearly says it is not good for man to be alone i will make a companion suitable for him and be assured that if god had made woman first god would have said the same thing it is not good for a woman to be alone i will make a companion for him i am saying this on the basis not on the basis of my imagination i am saying it on the basis of the dozens upon dozens of bible verses that speak about marriage now god actually uh, a brief mention of marriage or brief mention of the couple we find it genesis chapter 1 actually chapter 1 is a summary of creation once a summary of creation is given a small portion is picked up by the writer of genesis that's the holy spirit who used moses to write these uh, the first five books and also the book of job the holy spirit picks up a portion and expands it in chapter 2 why does he expand because uh, we need to know these things in detail in chapter 1 we hear we read like this verses 27 genesis 1 27 and 28 and there we read genesis 1 27 and 28 we read so god created man in his own image in the image of god he created him male and female created he them and god blessed them and god said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea etc then genesis 131 says god saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good so in genesis 1 a summary of uh, world's creation and a summary of man's creation is given in between god keeps on or the word of god keeps on saying god saw that it was good after creating man and woman as husband and wife or as companions god saw it and behold it was very good we should approach christian marriage with that perspective god created god found that it was good and then in chapter 2 in expansion of the first chapter we read that initially god had created only the male and god said it is not good for him to be alone i will make a companion for him and as i said as we read the old testament and new testament passages related to marriage it becomes very clear that even for women it is not good to be alone the verse says only about man but it's uh, the word of god says about the woman also or implies that woman also for women also it is not good to be alone so from god's perspective because it is god who created the institution of marriage it is not man who created it is god who created the institution of marriage and from his perspective it was good and we expect everything made by god to be good more so because god said it was good yet as in the story that i mentioned in the opening we know that all is not good with marriage today all is not good with marriage i remember 1960s and 70s when indian preachers would visit the us find a lot of shocking things in marriages come here and curse usa today the same thing is happening in india india is no different 
I mentioned only one story. When I read newspapers every day, I come across countless stories where the concept of marriage, where the institution of marriage is being corrupted. That is because man has done a lot of manipulation with divine, this divine institution. What do I mean by divine institution? Divine institution means God established it. It is God who established marriage and man now manipulates it. Once man starts to manipulate it, he gets a lot of support from Satan. Right from Eden, where he motivated women to break God's command, Satan motivates mankind to break each and every command of the word of God. And that includes commands related to the institution of marriage. So Satan has added a huge number of false teachings to the concept of marriage and sinful man has simply blindly grabbed it. You may say, brother, fortunately only man has grabbed, not believers. No, no, no. When I say sinful man, I'm talking about unregenerate sinful people and also regenerate people. They all have grabbed this kind of false ideas. One of these distortions by, see, by grabbing satanic ideas, many distortions have come. One of the distortions which has come even into the Christian community is to equate marriage with sex. Please remember, marriage is companionship and sex is only a small component of it very small component of it. That should be very clear to you. Then the question is, how? How did the image of marriage, the picture of marriage got corrupted? Actually, there are many, many ways through which the right picture of marriage got corrupted. Lots of things are there. I don't have time to cover all of them. So let me mention just India, how the institution or the picture of marriage got corrupted in India. And everyone listening to me, particularly those of, those of you who are Bible teachers, Please listen to me. Please listen to this historical survey. Brothers and sisters, if any of you is still embarrassed about your marriage, please listen to me. And many of you will be talking to others about marriage. Please listen to me. How the image of marriage got corrupted in India. In India, Particularly in the last 1,000, yeah, approximately 1,000 to 1,500 years, married life was always controlled by mother-in-law. There will be lots of there will be lots of mother-in-laws or mothers-in-law in this audience. You also listen carefully. Uh, there is much change in our generation, uh, but total change has not come. So I was doing a survey of uh, Indian sociology, and uh, Indian sociology says that in the last 1,500 years or so, marriages were always controlled primarily by mother-in-law. I have seen, I have seen that. I completed 68 this year and therefore I have seen that era where marriage was controlled by mother-in-law and I have seen 
how mother-in-laws controlled and manipulated it. And even today as I speak, though many changes are there, though many, many changes are there, lots of Indian families continue to be the same without change because though literacy has reached everywhere, it has not resulted in liberation of women. Now you may say, okay, brother, um, we do understand that marriage was always controlled by mother-in-law, but what has it got to do with uh, equating marriage with sex? Please listen to me. But before that, let me tell you, because of high education, people started leaving their homes joint families started breaking down. Joint families started breaking down, first of all, in India, uh, in Kerala. As Kerala, it started going to North India for jobs. But eventually, even in North, joint families started breaking. But even today, joint families are much common in North India. In joint families, and it is joint families which created a distorted image of marriage in India. In joint families, once a girl reached her husband's home, everything was controlled by mother-in-law, aunts, and other senior women in the family. The wife, the young wife had no privilege or freedom to spend time with her husband. And the husband, who was part of the joint family, had no freedom to spend time talking to his wife. I have personally witnessed it in my own family. My own family doesn't mean me and my wife. I'm talking about my ancestral family. I lived in, I was born in an ancestral family where three generations lived together. I have seen my great grandpa, grandpa, my pa, and also grandma, aunts, and I have seen what happened in joint families in India. The couple was wedded, but right from the first night, the woman was separated from the man. The woman had no freedom to talk to the husband. And the husband had no freedom to talk to the woman. There was nothing like companionship. There was nothing like fellowship. Today, many of you who are listening to me, you come from microscopic families where after wedding, a husband and wife are given their own room. It was not like that for last 1,500 years. So, husband was made to sleep with, the, with other male members of the family. And the wife was made to sleep with female members of the family. In many, many, many families, this young married woman had to sleep between her mother-in-law and the aunt, Bua, or Mausi. They were married, but they were not allowed to sit in the same place. They were not allowed to eat with each other. They were not allowed to talk with each other. You may ask then, how did they manage? This is something I know firsthand because of my age and because of my interaction with a lot of people. This young wife would sleep in between mother-in-law and aunt and wait for, wait eagerly for mother-in-law and aunt to sleep. Maybe uh, to, to fall asleep, maybe by one o'clock. 
the young man who married her he would wait he would sleep between his father and probably uncle and wait till maybe 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock for them to fall asleep and maybe he probably hinted her that at such and such time i will come and call you so when he knows that men on his left and right are sleeping he would get up go check at the women that was not an era of torches so he would check he would softly touch his wife who would immediately realize that her husband has come to call her she would cunningly get up this husband and wife would get up go find a spot somewhere in the house or somewhere and they would have physical relations this is how marriages in india continued and therefore for that man marriage was only sex for that woman marriage was only sex and that is how in india marriage became the synonym of sex there was no companionship no chance to talk with each other and for 1500 years this is how the majority of families continued since husband and wife were able to meet each other only for a short period of time that also after all of them slept and they were able to meet for a short period of time only for a hurried sex they were not able to talk there was no time to talk there was no time for companionship there was no time to share anything everything was in a hurry after 1500 years of marriage life like this joint families created a picture of marriage where marriage was sex sex was marriage because husband and wife had deal no other dealings with each other and i have seen when a husband goes near his wife women ask why have you come here my father was a little radical in his thinking and uh, 69 years ago when he got married and when he went to his wife's house he insisted that his wife should sit with him for food and papa and mummy my mom is no longer here but my father and mother say that 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 created a big scandal when my father asked my mother to sit beside him for us indians this is how marriages were conducted or marriages moved on and since husband and wife were able to meet each other only for sex marriage became the synonym of sex that is the reason why when there is a talk in indian families about marriage there is an embarrassed smell oh you are going to get married isn't it oh oh uh, you are going to get married isn't it it's a very strange kind of smile it is a very strange kind of laughter it is not normal do you know why the moment they talk about marriage what comes to the indian mind is sex and that's one reason why a lot of people are against to remarriage i have heard a lot of people saying oh why is he remarrying are baba the word of god says that if a young woman becomes a widow she should remarry that's why she is remarrying no 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 it is for sex why is that young man remarrying oh he cannot survive by himself no 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 it is for sex now the the first question is what is wrong with sex in their first marriage were they sexless and were you man you were you born without sex between your parents so why are you so embarrassed and why are you taking it as a sign of shame and embarrassment 
Number two, who told you that marriage is equal to sex? You have some distorted views in your mind. And this distorted view is a result of last 1,500 years of distorted practices in our families. The moment a woman becomes pregnant, everybody in the fam joint family, the moment a woman becomes pregnant, mother-in-law realizes, hmm, so you have been cheating me. When I sleep, you have been cunningly getting up and going and meeting your husband, isn't it? And the bua or mossy says, oh, ho, ho, ho. Young girl, when I was sleeping, you got up and went to your husband, isn't it? That's the reason why when they talk about conception, when a woman says that I am pregnant, there is an embarrassed smile. And when people ask, when women get married, everybody within a few months, they want to know, are you pregnant? Do they ask this way? You have been married for six months or eight months, isn't it? Are you pregnant? Is that the way they ask? No, no. Oh, in the English, we share Shonda. Malayalam. Which cover heck ya? Is there any news? Why this embarrassed smile? Because. In joint families, the girls had to cheat their mother-in-law and mossies and buas to go to her husband and the husband had to cheat the men. This has so corrupted Indian view of marriage that whenever the subject marriage comes, we can think only of sex. No. Let me tell you, according to the word of God, marriage is companionship and therefore among those who are listening to me there are some who are going to get married soon i want to remind you my dear young brother or sister try to understand the biblical concept of companionship if you want your marriage to be successful Listening to me, there are many married brothers and sisters. Let me tell you, your culture has corrupted you. Abandon that culture. Think of marriage in a biblical sense. There are a number of Bible teachers here. Let me tell you, brothers, it's your responsibility to open the eyes of people about biblical truths related to marriage. There are a number of sisters here who have teaching ministry, counseling ministry, lots of kind of ministry. Any one of you who talks with others, you have a teaching ministry. You may not be officially a teacher, but you have a teaching ministry. You have to correct these distorted views of Christian marriage. Marriage is for companionship sex plays a minor role okay now the breakup of joint families is changing the situation often the boy and the girl they get married they stay with their family maybe for a day or two and then they go to their places of job and live alone or many families they provide a room for them it is understood that they need privacy. They need privacy even for mutual conversation and sharing. And I'm very happy. But unfortunately, once human minds are contaminated, some contaminants remain in our mind. Those contaminants have to be removed. That is why premarital counseling has become so essential these days. A lot of churches have take, uh, started taking initiative in that field because they have understood 
how the christian idea of marriage was contaminated by the world and how those contaminating factors have to be removed from our minds and please remember a marriage christian or non christian but my focus here is on christian marriage a christian marriage can attain its true purpose only when false ideas are wiped out from their brains and once again let me remind you and the lord said it is not good for man to live alone i will make a companion suitable for him this is about women also based upon other statements in the bible the word of god gave so much importance to companionship that deuteronomy 24:5 says now please remember deuteronomy 24:5 please remember the jewish uh, young men they had to enlist in the jewish army for protection of their nation but deuteronomy 24:5 says when a man is newly married he shall not go out with the army or be liable for any other public duty he shall be free at home one year to be happy with his wife whom he has taken the word of god is very clear about the companionship idea and therefore it's our duty as bible believing christians to emphasize that and teach young people the true meaning and purpose of marriage and those of you who are going to get married in the near future please take care of this companionship aspect for one year they were ex exempted from compulsory duty so that they could spend the time knowing their wife talking with their wife sharing with their wife deuteronomy 27 it says deuteronomy 20 verse 7 is there any man who has betrothed a wife and has not married her let him go back to his house that means from army let him go back to his house lest he die in battle and another man marry her if a person is engaged if he is in the army let him go home marry her and be exempted for one year the scripture is very clear marriage is to be a life of joy lots of verses about that are found in the word of god proverbs 5:18 says proverbs 5:18 let your fountain be blessed and rejoice in the wife of your youth repeatedly the emphasis is on companionship and the joys of companionship ecclesiastes 99 talks about unbelievers ecclesiastes 99 enjoy life with the wife whom you, wife whom you love all the days of your vain life that is an unbeliever enjoy life with the wife whom you love all the days of your vain life that god has given you under sun because that is your portion in life and in your toil at which you toil under the under the sun an unbeliever he is going to eternal hell fire and therefore the scripture says at least one good gift god has given you and that is companionship with your wife remember marriage is an institution for all people not for believers alone for everyone so scripture says o oh, unbeliever you are rushing towards your eternal hell fire but at least the divine institution which god has made for everyone enjoy it the question is what to do lots of biblical references are there but let me begin with a principle 
laid out in another context this principle is laid out in another context but it is very much applicable to christian marriage the principle is laid out in hebrews chapter 1 second portion hebrews chapter 12 one second portion which says let us cast aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us christians have to run christian life is compared with a race and i hope you know people who participate in race they always try to wear the lightest clothing and the smoothest so that there is no air resistance any weight will slow you down and the scripture says that when a christian runs weight will slow down sin will slow down weight you can cast away sin clings to you so you need holy the help of the holy spirit to cast it away and please remember the scripture repeatedly reminds that even marriage is a race there is a full chapter about uh, christian marriage and we find that in first corinthians chapter 7 there a word which is repeatedly used is call our marriage is a call and it is a call unto many things and one of them is to run run our christian life faithfully so since our marriage life is also like a race cast away every weight which will slow you down and with the help of the holy spirit cast away every sin which clings to you so what to do first of all to make your marriage a success first of all cast aside all weight weight can slow down you may say okay uncle okay brother what are the things that weigh down our marriage number 1 these days a lot of people are addicted to their jobs i have this job i want the next position the next position the next one so instead of waiting upon the lord for their promotion they sacrifice their time they sacrifice their energy they sacrifice their time and family and get addicted to their job if they have to work 8 hours they work 10 12 or more hours upon the job it can destroy their family life another weight is addiction to electronic media today the electronic media have become so powerful that they can steal countless hours from your life what many of you don't know is that many of the most captivating programs that you see in electronic media are designed after consultants tell them what to do these consultants tell these organizers about how to enslave the audience these consultants are known as social engineers sitting in their office they charge a huge amount to tell people how to enslave you that is why some video programs which are very good are watched by 20 people whereas other programs which which are just trash are watched by 20 million people because those programs are designed by social engineers they are designed to make you an addict to them so addiction to job addiction to electronic media addiction to worldly friendship yes lot of worldly people they would try to steal your time addiction to gossip or any other kind of addiction is a weight which prevents you from your race 
which prevents you from your companionship with your husband or your wife or with your children once children are born in the family please those of you who are going to get married whether your wedding is close or far make a firm decision today that you will cast aside all those things which will weigh down you from your race in your marriage it will not be easy no casting away worldly friends is not easy casting away your addiction to cricket because of which you spend all your night watching cricket it's not easy watching other kinds of addiction is not easy but please remember those addictions reduce you to somebody or something who is less than what god called you for it will not be easy but it has to be done no surgery is easy now many of you here heard about my surgery in may a tumor was removed and many of you earnestly prayed for me for which i am very thankful it took me all of 3 months before they allowed me even to eat normal food today i am normal i can eat anything but those 3 months and the day of surgery was not easy mine was a um general anesthesia kind of thing because it was exceedingly painful no surgery is easy but since i endured it today i am all right in the same way you have to cast aside all weight all tumors it's not going to be easy it's a surgery but you have to do it okay the first thing for a successful and happy married life the first thing is cast away all weight second develop healthy communication habits many of us do not have healthy communication habits because we indians have been taught through our culture through many things that husband and wife they should not talk that is an absolutely false idea they should talk and they should talk openly please remember a husband and wife they should not only talk they should talk openly honestly and when they talk openly and honestly there should be no murmuring share your problems without murmuring against your husband or against your wife speak without bitterness your wife may have done something wrong your husband may have done something wrong speak to your husband and wife or wife without bitterness and remember one thing before you jump into any kind of complaint against your husband or wife ask because you may be thinking wrong for example if you think that your wife was talking to such and such person or if you think that your husband was talking to such and such person with whom you don't want him or her to talk ask them first did he talk with that person instead of just blasting that person and please remember if there is a problem try to solve it before you simply say no no it cannot be solved i know this man i know this woman it's hopeless no so for a successful christian marriage the first thing is you have to cast away all the unnecessary weight which weighs you down sins also which weigh you down number 
for the sake of companionship develop healthy communication habits third and this is most important develop your personal intimacy with the lord do you know why i am sure many of you have seen that plaque which hangs in many christian homes which says a family that prays together stays together it's very very right statement a family that prays together stays together i'm not talking about mechanical prayer oh father oh, oh, bless everybody and today we are very late and therefore uh, now we are going to have food or we are going to lie down you know everything father bless amen i'm not talking about that kind of prayer i'm talking about meaningful prayer a family that has a meaningful prayer has a very high chances of uh, staying together but that can happen only if you have uh, personal intimacy with the lord and personal intimacy with the lord is made up of bible reading it is made up of devotion it is made up of reflection and it is also made up of personal prayer you have to develop all this if you want a successful marriage life and the fourth okay three things i mentioned number one cast away all those things which are going to prevent your race number two develop healthy communication habits number three develop your personal intimacy with the lord if you if you are not intimate with the lord you will never be able to establish a spiritual foundation for your marriage and you will also never be able to relate properly and spiritually with your marriage partner once the three things are over the fourth thing you have to do is develop joint prayer with your life partner those of you who are going to get married let me remind you when the lord allows you or whenever the lord allows you to talk with each other these days many parents allow our people to be married to talk with each other don't spend all your time in this 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 spend 5 minutes for prayer also with each other develop joint prayer that means if your family allows you to talk before your wedding start prayer there itself if it doesn't allow that's up to them start prayer the very first day of your marriage okay these are the four things you have to note and if you take care of all these things i want to assure you you are on the way to a successful christian marriage you may say hey uncle but you did not say anything about sex i thought you are going to give a detailed sex manual no that is the old concept which we have inherited from a totally wrong sociological attitude if you want to know about healthy sex there are a large number of good christian books visit operation mobilization visit any christian book you will get a number of real good books if you read malayalam by our santushta gudumam there is one chapter in that book on that topic i am not going into details because that is not the main component it's an important component but important doesn't mean main component they are different from each other having said that now some of you may have some questions in your mind now many of you are unmarried so let me start with the questions which an unmarried people ask me some people say uncle i am unmarried but i i am in love affair but the man i love 
the woman i love is short tempered let me tell you my beloved children first of all i do not support love marriage love marriages are taking place all around us but i don't support it that's because marriage is a family affair and therefore your family should definitely be involved in it your mom who carried you for 9 months in her tummy she should be given priority in such matters listen to her your father who worked like a donkey for 25 years or 26 years to give you a good education listen to him don't rush into love marriages number 1 now by chance if you fell into love affair and if you have this question to ask the young man or woman with whom i am going to get married not engaged yet but whom i want to marry is short tempered what should i do well you are asking what should i do to remove the short temper and the best thing you can do is decide to quit that love affair allow your family to find you a correct person oh you may say uncle that is a very shocking yes it is a shocking thing if your the man or woman whom you love is short tempered before marriage then after the wedding is over he or she will be a hundred times more short tempered lot of people say love will solve everything only stupid people say that love is not a medicine a medicine for solving short temper okay so first of all don't fall into the trap of love affair by chance but by chance if you fell and if he or she is a short tempered person run as far away from that person as possible second question which a lot of people ask me is uncle i am unmarried but i am in love affair but the man or woman uh, whom i want to marry is uh, jealous he does not like he or she does not like me talking with the opposite sex again let me tell you my dear child love marriage is not a good idea but by chance if you are in love affair and if the opposite partner is jealous and if he or she doesn't like you talking with the opposite sex then first of all kill half of the world population before you get married do you know why half of the world is made up of opposite sex whether you go to a bank whether you go to your office whether you go to your school or college half of the people are made of opposite sex and therefore all your married life your husband or your wife will be jealous they will check your mobile for call records they will ask you detailed questions if you are standing on a bus stand and if your husband or wife comes to pick you up and if a man is standing near you and you did not even see that man or woman that person will cross examine you for next 3 hours and whenever there is next disagreement you or will she or will say it was because of that man or because of that woman so if you are in love affair and if that person is a jealous person leave that person run away others say uncle i am unmarried but i am in love affair with a greedy person a worldly person a person who likes to live a lavish life a person who is glutton who lives only to eat my question is my dear child first of all you made a mistake by not allowing your parents to choose a mate for you a com- companion for you and number 2 you will destroy your life by marrying a person who is greedy for money who is worldly 
who likes to live lavishly who is a glutton who lives only for eating marriage will not cure that person take it from me i have seen hundreds upon hundreds of such marriages they thought marriage will cure it marriage only makes it worse okay uh, that much for those of you who are unmarried some of you who are married you may want to say i have a super busy life i cannot spare time for my life partner what should i do my answer is my dear brother my dear sister change your priorities it is a matter of priority we always find time for things to which we give priority that's human nature time always flows into the direction to which we give priority so if you are super busy if you cannot spare time for ma your marriage it it would have been better if you ha had remained unmarried but now that you are married you order your priorities so that you are able to find time another question which a lot of married people ask is my life partner is very silent or silent type i am talkative what to do well there are lots of ways number one if you are talkative and if your partner is silent don't force your partner to become talkative he or she will not it's human nature rather there are tens of thousands of couple couples i personally know dozens of them where one is talkative the other is silent but over the years they have evolved methods of communication communication is not always talking and silence is not always lack of communication you have to evolve you have to learn don't try to force the other person to become talkative another question is my life partner does not take interest in spiritual life that's very difficult you cannot make a person spiritual there is no magic so the first thing you have to do is you see to it that your spiritual life is not destroyed your bible reading your prayer your devotion and make it a point to set apart a time for reading the bible and prayer and do it in the presence of your life partner so that he or she watches it even if silently he or she watches it you sitting and reading the bible you kneeling kneeling is something we have forgotten It's most unfortunate your unspiritual life partner should see you reading the bible and kneeling in front of god it will have effect and keep praying because if your life partner is unspiritual only god can change him of course if you married him through a love affair and if you knew that he or she is not spiritual then it's your mistake and therefore it is time for you to double atone for your mistake by spending double time in god's presence so that your partner may see and be changed another question is now this is very common these days very common i i'm i'm not saying that every marriage but uh, it has become more frequent mine is an arranged marriage but after a wedding i found that my companion is neither male nor female because of genetic problems a lot of people are born these days who are neither male not female they are eunuchs and i personally know personally know many 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 marriages where girls were married to eunuchs by claiming that they were boys boys were married to eunuchs by claiming that they were girls 
what should i do now some people will say it you were you took vows with that person that is a lot of trash marriage vows are to be taken only with a person of opposite sex not with a eunuch that should be clear to you according to indian law cheating a person to marry a eunuch is a crime they can be punished i am not saying that a christian should immediately go and get those people punished because uh, they cheated you but one thing according to the word of god it is not a marriage you are not married to that person because marriage is always between a man and a woman not between a man and a eunuch not between a woman and a eunuch not between two men not between two women not between a, an a, a man and an animal not between a woman and an animal my last statement may shock you but there are now many people who uh, advocate that i should be given the privilege of marrying my animal lot of people are advocating for that please remember these are not weddings these are not marriages the scripture does not accept them as marriage indian law does not accept it as marriage and if you are happy to live with that person that is your personal choice it's a costly choice let me remind you very costly choice but it is your personal choice otherwise you should get that uh, uh, marriage annulled you may say what do you mean by annulled do you mean divorce no i don't mean divorce annulment means the law says it is not marriage and therefore you ask the law to declare that this was a cheating and it was not a wedding it was not a marriage that should be very clear to all of you particularly those of you who are going to get married because such cheating has become more frequent among us many parents they prefer to put their burden upon a boy or a girl by cheating them so be very clear that if he or she turns out to be a eunuch biblical bible does not recognize it as a marriage the word of god does not recognize it as a marriage god does not recognize it as a marriage indian law also does not recognize it a marriage marriage is always between a man and a woman not between a man and a eunuch or between a woman or a eunuch okay so that answers this question another question my life partner is violent here comes the family if you married through a love affair you cannot go to your father or mother to say that please help me they may say you made your choice and now don't bother us i have seen many 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 families where girls fall for boys boys for fall for girls but mostly girls fall for boys and the boy acts as an angel but finally turns out to be devil's younger brother in such case only your family can help that is another reason my dear young children don't fall into love affair don't fall it marriage is a family affair don't violate that okay allow your parents to choose if the person they choose is not to your liking you can always you have the freedom to say i don't like the person i know that person he is not what you think or i don't like the looks i don't i, I talk then i don't like the their spiritual commitment you have the freedom okay allow your parents to find a 
companion for you and when that happens if your partner is violent do not accept it one or two incidents of violence maybe because of hurry because of this or that reason first of all you check whether it is because of you if it is because of you you change yourself some women have very poisonous tongues and their husbands become violent some men have very vicious tongues women become violent that's your mistake you change yourself but if it is not your mistake and if your life partner is violent because of temper because of madness because of uh, addiction to alcohol or other things then immediately seek help from your family don't hide it in india people are told to hide it from their family that is wrong the best people to help you are your parents immediately tell it to them immediately allow them to solve it you may say your dad is a violent person he will kill your husband that's your dad's business but do tell it it's protect yourself finally you may say okay uncle you told a lot of things that i have to do number 1 number 2 number 3 number 4 unfortunately before my wedding or after my wedding during all these years i have not been able to do that now it is too late my dear children my dear brothers and sisters there is nothing in christian life as too late please listen to me once again there is nothing in the christian world as too late please remember it make a fresh beginning trust in the lord and the lord will gradually help you to change and become a person in his image i thank god for this opportunity he gave to present these things lord willing this video will become available tomorrow on youtube 